champions are ahead for the first time in this semi-final. Monster three, Saracen six. Very big five minutes coming up once more. On the boundary edge, it's Billy Bonapola. Oh, and now he finally gets some space and Stander comes across to try and fill it and Ashton's herring after it. Earls accelerates a little bit, understanding the threat. And he's hit hard by Barrett on the blind side. And Sarah is now pressurising where they can on this clearing Use kick that will eventually come. Pressure on Williams. And back into the arms of Billy Bonapola, who hasn't waited around. And good to Farrell. Maitland is his best prospect on that far left-hand side. Here he goes, the Scott. Running into O'Mahony. Sorry. George Cruz is putting in back in time for the big ones. Full 80 minutes on his return last Sunday. Oh, it's on here, Nick. They've turned it over, and there might be a little bit more here. What's Mako up to? He just threads that through for Chris Ashton. Oh, it was perfectly placed by the prop, and the ball goes out of play. And uh, that will conclude business at the end of a 40 minutes. Pretty much bossed on the pitch by Munster, but somehow, somehow, it is the defending champions who are ahead. It's going to be fascinating here from Donica O'Callaghan at half time. At the break here in Dublin, Munster three, Saracen six. Took the ball, Armstead, out the far side. There's a kick from Maku Vunapola, it's a, a rare thing indeed. It means Sonotti, Sonotti is being hounded by Chris Ashton, the ball is bobbling around. Sonotti, Sonotti looks as though he might have played that on the floor, but they've got away with it. Use it! Oh, they've stolen it. Come through, intercepted, and I think Michael Rhodes has got the score. Well, I guess surprised everyone that. Michael Rhodes with his first Premiership try. And it's a little bit of pilfering. I think uh, Hodgson. He's having to scramble, isn't he? Backwards. Tackle uh, Sonotti, Sonotti. Can he find his way through? He can. Sonotti, Sonotti has tape. Tape, oh, loses his footing. Backline is free. Nearly Lati with a little nudge through. Covering his uh, Maitland. The Saracens are able to breathe. Never on the ball. Maybe the wrong option there from Newcastle. Wigglesworth, again, safe and out. And again, Sinotti, Sinotti. You've got so many moving parts, it's almost difficult to choose which one to hit. And that's unfortunate from Tate. Kind of reminds me of last weekend, Alex Tate. He made a mess of the uh, opportunity down there to score at Exeter. Loses his footing there. Yeah, he's a bowling ball of a man. It's about to go to six minutes. Lost again in the tackle. Hill, Launchbury, Laws. He's a big man, but he can shift. Mike Brown trying to get there with him. Needs to set it back and does. Jamie George, little chip from the hooker. Who's after this? Farrell. It's the series. It's going to be the series, I think. Owen Farrell. Jamie George saw that it was on. French almost managing a turnover. Recycling for Mtawarira and then the hard-working Franco Mostert with the carry, creating some momentum. Now Dupria. Who was that? Who was that? Out the side and uh, quickly popped up by Slimani. Camera with the heck through now Kutsia from the back beautiful stepping from Andres Kutsia marks that 
Matty Saran will feel that contact. Now Cronje gets it up high to test spinning. Scosson got an arm to it and backwards for Whiteley. Gets past LaRue. Mark Hammett. And oh, no, again, it's uh, the All Blacks losing out in their own line out. Here's uh, Keith Wood showing some versatility. Now let's have a look at this. Oh, oh, oh. how's that? How many hookers around the world of international rugby can do that? Well, commonly referred to by a lot of journalists as the world's number one hooker. This is tremendous pressure on Ireland, Jason Little ball just goes loose <laughs> audacious play again by Pete Woods now for the chase Ben Tune is back oh could he get up on him Bishop two terrific tackles, O'Shea looking to dig it out the penalty goes for Ireland Australia hanging on well, Keith Wood may look like Uncle Fester, but let me tell you, he can play rugby. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is his penalty, Steve. He just did wonderfully. Oh, my good word. Good footwork there. He steps. Um, they spool the ball. I mean, Australia, fantastic attack. Wave after wave after wave. And just spilling it right at the last minute. Look at the leg power here. They're working through tackles, working through tackles. And then at the last minute, they spill it. Keith Wood, what a great step. And there he goes. Lovely right boot. And a Kinnigan showed real pain. This week's World Cup memory takes us back to 1995 and the semi final between England and New Zealand. You know, in that first half, we were just we were under the cosh. We bounced back in the second half. It's no good winning the second half, is it, when you get smashed in the first half? The match will always be remembered for the brilliance of Jonah Lomu, but there was also another moment of all black magic. It was actually Robin, my brother, actually did a, he did a, uh, he did a bomb, he did a Gary Owen down there, and it pulled it back into the 22. Robin Brook then puts a big hoop on it. And look at that one, get, having the England players going back. That's Will Carling's kick, screws off his boot, he has a chance for New Zealand. I was sitting about uh, inside the halfway, about uh, from the five or ten metre line, inside our own half, and I thought, uh, well, I'm going to sit here because I thought we were going to attack. I was going to go wide le left on here because I had Jonah and Mike Brewer on my left-hand side. Jim Sandbrook, he's trying a drop kick from a million miles out. What a goal! I remember looking at Zin Zandbrook and after he dropped his goal, <laughs> I don't know what the score was, I think it was 20 something nil at that stage after 20 minutes and it was just ridiculous and, and we just sort of looked at one another as if like, what, you know, what's going on here? I used to practice all the time, I used to love kicking. Why is it that a fly half has to kick the ball? You know, we've had in the past, look at John Eels, John Eels is famous for winning a Bledisloe Cup, you know, that kick down in Wellington here, you know, John Eels locked 40 here. This should be the best person who's got the best, best ball skills, but thank goodness they went over though.